I've been with my current boyfriend nearly four years and we live together. I have a five-year-old child with my ex-boyfriend. For backstory, my ex-boyfriend is very narcissistic and mean. I got pregnant fairly young and we split when my son was an infant because he was consistently cheating on me with several women, would not do any housework, barely helped me with our son, wouldn't work or contribute, and so on. He was also extremely verbally and emotionally hurtful and at times would get physical as well. Since our split, we've established a decent co-parenting schedule and communication, but it did take a while for us to reach some kind of middle ground. Right now, I have my son Monday through Friday and he takes him on weekends. He does not contribute financially and dodges his child support with cash work. He does occasionally argue with me about things or makes things very difficult, but for the most part, we just abide by our schedule and go about life. If we talk, it's only about our son, the schedule, and so on. And we truthfully never really see each other as I pick him up from school Monday afternoons, and he usually picks him up from school on Friday afternoons. My current boyfriend and I are living together, and while I believe he loves my son, he's made it very clear he's not interested in being a stepdad. He treats my son with a lot of respect. He plays with him, and if I'm in a bind, he will occasionally watch him for me. He buys him holiday gifts or small surprises. On occasion, he will back me up with discipline if my son isn't listening, but mainly, discipline is my responsibility. He has drawn a financial line, meaning he won't contribute to daycare, school expenses, and so on. I'm okay with him setting those boundaries. I think he helps me plenty, and I don't expect him to do those things. Moving on to the situation, since my boyfriend has been in my son's life since he was about one, he has seen the way my ex treats my son and me. Again, it's much better now, but before he would simply not show up on his days, verbally abuse me over texts, mess me over on daycare or financial matters, and put me in difficult situations. He would block me, unblock me, and if I did anything he didn't like, it would turn into a whole ordeal. He'd make me late to work by not showing up on time. He'd send our son back dirty, with no socks or jacket, and taking my ex to court for support, among other things. I would try not to involve my boyfriend as much as possible, but this is a core part of my life and it has caused me a great deal of stress, which obviously has shown throughout the years. Last night, I kept my son on Friday evening because we went to this Halloween event. Afterwards, I dropped him with his grandma overnight who lives down the block because I'm exhausted from working two jobs and have been working 14 days straight. My son has a tendency to wake me up in the middle of the night. I told my ex to be at my house by 9 a.m. today to pick our son up as I work at 10.30. I anticipated getting up at 7 a.m. today and grabbing him from his grandma, but I accidentally overslept and woke up to my ex pounding on my door at 9 a.m. This woke up both me and my boyfriend. I tried to quickly pull myself together and then informed my ex that my son was down the street with his grandma. He left, but was making a whole ordeal out of it, like he usually does, swearing at me over text, saying my son should have been at my house with me, and making me feel guilty about having grandma watch him, already feeling awful for not getting up and now having to wake up to his dad angry with me. My boyfriend then also commented about how disrespectful it was for my ex to be knocking loudly like that on our door and that I need to tell him to never do that again. My main concern was my child getting picked up, so I just brushed over the knocking. Plus, I did tell my ex to be here at that time, and since I was asleep, I didn't answer his calls or texts about him being outside waiting for me. I figured I would, and definitely have in the past done this have been knocking on his door too, and the reality is that me sending aggressive messages to my hurtful narcissist ex usually just results in a much bigger fight. There's no reasoning with my ex in that manner. He will flip everything and go out of his way to make my life harder. I found it's easier to take the high road, remain as cordial as possible, and just not give in to his drama as it always results in things being much worse. Now for an update. My boyfriend is very upset. He said both I and my ex disrespected him, that I allow my ex to behave like that, and because I don't say anything, my ex continues to do so. He doesn't understand how much worse things get for me 
when I do say something. He told me I'm disrespecting him by not telling my ex to never knock on my door like that again and that I have a terrible co-parenting relationship. He said if he had an ex, she would never knock on his door like that. He believes that me not sorting this situation out with my ex is why we can't move forward and that it's ruining our relationship. He feels I keep making this his problem and that he shouldn't have to be woken up in his own house by my ex knocking like that. He just kept going on and on. I tried explaining and apologizing, but was met with, don't talk to me about it. Go figure it out with your mom or dad. Talk to them about it, not me. Stop making it my problem. He hopes that after I talk to my parents about this, I'll have a plan to better manage this. I'm at a loss. I truly wish I had never overslept because now I have two people upset with me for it and all of this would have been avoided if I had just gotten up at 7 a.m. like I was supposed to. I don't know how to mediate things with my boyfriend. I cannot control my ex. While I agree that things between us co-parenting-wise could be better, I can't force him to do or not do certain things. He has made it very clear over the years that he will do whatever he wants to do whenever he wants to do it. Am I in the wrong for not confronting my ex about how he treats me when I know how it will go. I have tried to confront him repeatedly while we were dating, and it doesn't work. How do I help my boyfriend understand where I am coming from and that his aggressive approach isn't going to work? I just feel like I'm failing at everything. I try so hard to be a good mother and girlfriend. I am working so much to cover all my bills. Truthfully, I have had two days off total for the month of October so far, no joke. I'm trying to keep the house together, make dinner, help my son with school, playtime, and spend time with my boyfriend. Still, I just keep getting told all the things I'm not doing right or that I should have done differently. I don't know what to do, and now I'm just crying in my car while writing this when I'm supposed to be at work in half an hour. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Your boyfriend sounds like a clown. You went from one hurtful relationship to the next. Your boyfriend is ruining your relationship, not you. You have no control over your ex's behavior, just as you have no control over your current boyfriend's behavior towards you. You can talk to someone until you're blue in the face, but you have no control over someone else's behavior. If he is not there to help support you and be someone you can talk to, why are you with him? He sounds awful. Comment two. If he didn't want to date a parent, he shouldn't have dated a parent. Listen, as hard as it is to break up with a guy you have real feelings for, you need to do it. The longer this guy is in your life, the more emotionally attached your child is going to be. Now for the update. The boyfriend's sister had a birthday party for her daughter, and even though he didn't want to go, my son and I were invited, so we went. The ex showed up, saying he wanted to see his son. When he saw him, he got mad, yelling that I was a lying piece of crap and that I had no right to lie about him like that. My boyfriend confronted him and they started shouting. I took my son into the house to keep him away from the yelling. The ex was saying that I was turning our son against him and that if I didn't stop, he would take legal action. My boyfriend insisted that we file a complaint against the ex for harassment and I was finally on board with it. I just wanted this to end. So I started documenting everything. I made spreadsheets that had the dates and times of incidents and the contents of the texts he sent. My boyfriend helped me gather evidence. He wrote down the things he saw the ex do and the things he heard him say. The things he saw were sometimes really bad. Like one time he showed up to pick up our son and he was so high that he couldn't even get out of the car. I didn't let him take our son that day. I told him that if he wanted to see him, he needed to get sober because I wasn't letting our son go with a person under the influence like that. He called me every name in the book, but in the end, he went home empty-handed. I also found out that he was dating someone new. I found her on social media, and she had a really bad past. She had been fired from her last job for stealing from the customers. It was a job working with children. She also had a history of domestic violence. I called the ex during the time we agreed on to talk about our son, and I brought it up. I told him that I was concerned about the new girlfriend. He got defensive, saying that she was fine 
and that I was overreacting. I told him that I thought we should change the visitation schedule. I wanted him to have more supervised visits with our son. He exploded, threatening to take me to court over it. My boyfriend suggested we should consult with a lawyer to make sure we were protecting our rights. I was done with this and I was going to make sure I was legally protected. I sent the ex a message telling him that I would be seeking legal advice from a lawyer and that I would be in touch with him after I did. He sent a ton of messages back. He was angry, saying that I was a horrible person for doing this to him. I blocked him, even though my boyfriend had his number saved so we could still keep track of the texts he sent. After that, I felt a little better. I was doing something to protect my son. Thank you for reading. Edit. After a few weeks, I consulted with a lawyer. We filed for supervised visits and temporary custody changes. The ex's girlfriend was reviewed and we were granted a temporary restraining order against her. Am I the idiot for refusing to let my boyfriend's toxic family tear us apart? My boyfriend and I have been together almost two years. The first year or so was fantastic, except for the brother's fiance being inappropriate with my boyfriend. It got to the point where she wasn't taking his subtle hints of moving away from her, taking her arms off him, not allowing her to sit on his lap, and my boyfriend felt the need to say something. He texted the fiancé, which caused massive issues with his brother. The brother called him awful names, insulted me, insulted him, and so on. It was bad. About four months ago, right after this came up, we had a tense family gathering where the beans were spilled. It resulted in two hours of yelling, mostly by the brother and their mom, about how all of this is my fault, the fiancé was acting appropriately, and I'm manipulative and trying to tear the family apart. It was awful. The brother was screaming at me and had to be held back a few times, like he was trying to scare me into thinking he'd attack me. The brother has always been like this, not towards me before this, so this is how he acts. When he's mad at their mom, he shoves her and calls her awful names, and she laughs it off. I'm close with the rest of the family. They say he's been like this since childhood, always a loose cannon, always nasty to family, not someone they want to be around. Due to the drama, we have only participated in limited family functions, mainly without the brother and sister-in-law. My boyfriend's mom has since given me a half apology for the blowout, but is putting it all on my boyfriend to solve the family strife. Needless to say, when a group of people are verbally and on the verge of physically attacking you, it's hard to get back to normal but I've tried my best with his mom since she apologized. His brother is a whole other story. The mom believes, despite acting like he was going to attack me that night, the awful names he called me and things he said while I kept my mouth shut, that he is perfect, just defending the woman he loves and so forth. She feels my boyfriend and I need to fix this because we're tearing her family apart. I have zero interest in seeing the brother or future sister-in-law again, but I know if I stay in this relationship, that's not possible. My boyfriend has been torn up over this because his parents keep putting it on him to fix everything. He suggested to his brother a few times that we meet up and talk it out respectfully. He's been met with harsh words or just ignored. Again, my boyfriend's mom blames him us for this not getting fixed. My boyfriend was so happy-go-lucky when I met him and now he's incredibly depressed. It's easy for me and most people I've talked to, to see that the brother is the main issue, enabled by his mother who is guilting my boyfriend to no end because she knows he's the caring one, whereas the brother would write us both off and never speak to us again. Sounds great. We've talked constantly about this to the point where I'm just repeating my same points and my boyfriend hears it, but at the end of the day, wants everything resolved. I'm frustrated because before this, now major speed bump, this was the best relationship I'd been in. Because of the family issues, it doesn't seem healthy for either of us, which is heartbreaking. My boyfriend has acknowledged I was right to express my concerns and that any normal person would, but he is terribly depressed over all of this to the point of not wanting to get out of bed. What do I do? Thanks in advance. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one. Oh wow, this is one of the worst golden child slash scapegoat situations I've ever read. 
I am so sorry your boyfriend can't and won't protect you from his physically and emotionally hurtful family. Why is your boyfriend so keen on keeping these relationships? If he knows and acknowledges that his brother is abusive, why does he, one, want to maintain a relationship with someone like that, and two, subject you to it as well? Seriously, why does he expect you to suffer emotional and potentially physical abuse for him? It's only a matter of time before his brother shoves you or hits you just like he does his mom. And you know what? They'll blame you for that too. What's the line for your boyfriend on acceptable behavior to subject other people to? There's obviously some seriously messed up stuff going on with the family, but your boyfriend has to realize that there is no way to fix this that isn't 100% no contact with his family. He's bringing a pillow to a fist fight, literally. As for you, I sure hope this is a deal breaker for you. There are people out there without hurtful families who you could also say this is the best relationship I've ever had about. There's that saying, a bad sandwich is a bad sandwich. Doesn't matter if 99% of it isn't bad, 1% is. And boy, your bad sandwich is 85% bad. Comment two, I've straight up told him the only way to resolve everything in the way that'll please the brother seems to be the biggest priority would be if I left. He'd feel like he won and he'd be happy about it. I've told my boyfriend I am willing to graciously just step away from this relationship if he feels it'll harm his familial relationship, which is obviously more important than the one with the woman he claims to want to marry. We're both on edge, and when I mentioned just leaving to make his brother happy, he said I'm weak when I threaten that, but I truly feel like it's being more mature than attempting to force him to go no contact with his family, which will clearly cause his depression to spiral. Now, for the update. Just under a week after the last family drama, I get a text from my boyfriend asking to meet up at the local diner. Not exactly the kind of request that makes me happy, but whatever. We needed to talk about his brother anyway. So I show up, and he arrives looking like he just got out of a horror movie or something. Like, dude, it's not that bad. We can figure this out. He tells me his brother has been spreading rumors about me. Great, just what I needed. Apparently, the brother is claiming that I encouraged the fiancé's behavior. My first reaction was like, What? Me? Encourage that? No, thanks. We chat for a bit about how this guy's words seem to be affecting our relationship. I mean, they're causing so much trouble that I need to buy a new jar of grease. He suggests we confront his brother together to clear things up, which I think is a good idea. So. We decide to go to this family barbecue planned for the upcoming weekend at his parents' house. I mean, what's the worst that could happen, right? On the day of the barbecue, I can't help but feel a little uneasy, but I'm determined to support my boyfriend. He needs me, and honestly, I need him more than I care to admit. When we pull up, the atmosphere is just screaming awkward. The brother avoids eye contact like I'm some kind of ghost. My boyfriend's mom tries to be all cheerful, but I can tell she's nervous. It's like they're all walking on eggshells. We mingle a bit, and during the barbecue, the brother makes this snide comment about not trusting outsiders. I mean, who even says that? My boyfriend steps in, demanding his brother apologize for the accusations. The brother just scoffs and says he doesn't owe anyone anything. Oh great, here we go. The fiancé tries to make a joke to deflect, but it falls completely flat, making things even worse. Then the brother snaps back, accusing her of playing the victim. I mean, wow, just wow. My boyfriend then says we all need to be honest about what's happening. The mom tries to mediate, suggesting we just enjoy the food and avoid conflict. Like, hello, conflict is already here, lady. My boyfriend agrees, but insists we need to resolve this soon. Later. While everyone's distracted by the food, I overhear the fiancé whispering to the brother. I catch snippets about a plan to get rid of me and my boyfriend. My heart just drops at that. I walk up to them, demanding to know what they're plotting. The brother looks shocked, and the fiancé tries to brush it off as a joke. Yeah, right. I refuse to back down and insist they come clean. The fiancé's demeanor shifts, and she gets all hostile. That's when my boyfriend joins me, supporting my stance against his brother and fiancé. It's like, finally, you're on my side. The brother finally admits he never liked me, blaming me for all the family's issues. Like, excuse me, he says he's always known I was trouble. 
This just escalates, and the fiancé starts accusing me of ruining their family. In a surprising twist, my boyfriend's mom steps in, revealing she overheard everything. She starts chastising her son for his behavior, and I'm just standing there, shocked. She admits she wished he would have stood up for me sooner. The barbecue turns into a chaotic scene as she calls for everyone to settle down. The brother storms off, yelling that the family doesn't need my kind around. The fiancé follows, throwing insults over her shoulder as she leaves. My boyfriend is just standing there, stunned, realizing his family dynamics are more toxic than he thought. He suggests we take a break from family events for a while. And honestly, I think that's a good idea. We both agree we need to focus on our relationship and distance ourselves from the toxicity. We walk away from the barbecue, hand in hand, ready to figure things out together. Edit. After the barbecue, things took a bit of time to settle down. My boyfriend and I decided to take a break from family events for a couple of months to focus on ourselves. We found that without the constant stress from his family, our relationship improved significantly. We also sought couples counseling, which helped us communicate better and understand each other's needs. My boyfriend eventually confronted his brother, leading to a long talk where they addressed their issues. Although they're not close, they're on better terms now. The fiancé is no longer in the picture, thank goodness. We're doing well and feel much happier together. Am I the idiot for standing up to my girlfriend's toxic mother and choosing our own path? I'm 20 years old and in love with my girlfriend and her parents. My girlfriend is also 20, and she is the love of my life. But just to get straight to the point, I'm starting to think her mom is hurtful. First of all, her mom has said numerous times that she regrets having kids and wishes she never had them. She says it to her own daughter, which I just think is disgusting. My girlfriend and I both pay rent to live at the house. Her mom also refuses to cook for us, so we cook for ourselves every night and buy our own groceries and food. She doesn't spend a single dime on us, which is not a problem at all. We're adults, so we can do these things ourselves. However, my girlfriend's mom still complains about how much of her money we use. This has always confused me because, like I said, everything we use, we pay for. We pay rent. And actually, my girlfriend gave her mom over a thousand pounds to help pay the mortgage. But still, she treats us like a burden. If we are ever in a good mood, we are criticized and told that we are not living real life. She has tried to convince me to leave my job multiple times, which I haven't done as I'm paid well for my age and am in a very good position. When my girlfriend and I went on holiday together, her mom told us to enjoy it as we won't get any when we're older. She has shouted and had a go at my girlfriend for being excited about going on holiday. She has told us numerous times that we are going to struggle in life and pretty much tells us that we will be poor. She says this to her own daughter. She tells her own daughter that she will amount to nothing. The other day at dinner, my girlfriend even mentioned the fact that she felt as though she wasn't wanted. I can't remember what her mom said back to her, but I remember it was bad. My girlfriend then said that is no way to talk about your own child to which her mom replied, just you wait until you have kids. Like what? I'm sorry, but she treats her daughter like a problem rather than her own blood. There have also been times when she has spoken to my girlfriend, complaining about me and telling my girlfriend all the things she doesn't like about me. This has happened so many times. One example is that she has told my girlfriend that she finds it cringy when I do things for her. So she finds it cringy if I buy my girlfriend a gift or take her on a date. Like, excuse me, what? She's done the same with me, where she has pretty much criticized my girlfriend to me, and I have actually had to stop her and tell her that I don't agree. She is extremely unaware of how she behaves. It's like she does not realize that my girlfriend and I will talk to each other about what she is saying about us. Anytime we have good news or are happy, we are challenged and criticized. For example, my girlfriend says she loves cooking, her mom says, try doing it every night. Um, she does. She cooks every night because you refuse to cook for us. But my girlfriend's cooking is better anyway, so I won't complain about that. I just bought a new watch that I like. Why isn't it a Rolex? Like, are you joking? 
I do not have the money to buy a Rolex. I'm still allowed to like my watch. There have been times where my girlfriend and I argue, of course, and her mom will come to me and say she completely agrees with me, but she also does the same to my girlfriend, like she is trying to drive us apart. We were moving house, which my girlfriend and I were going to take a small mortgage out for to help her parents, but she's recently told us when they move, we won't have a room. So she is saying we can't move with them. We don't make enough money to have our own house or rent, so she is actually forcing us into homelessness. It's getting bad now. It's constant, constant criticism, constant insults. It's bad. She was annoyed because she had to cook for us. Now she is annoyed because my girlfriend cooks in the kitchen. Like, do you just not want us to have dinner? She also has a go at us for wasting money if we get a takeaway. This is obviously so upsetting for my girlfriend, who is strong and extremely aware of what is going on. The worst part is my girlfriend has a sister and her mom has no problems with her or her boyfriend. They don't pay rent and have their meals cooked for them. They only work part-time and it upsets my girlfriend so much. I just don't know what to do anymore. We're being forced out. We'll have nowhere to live. Like I said, my girlfriend has spoken to me about how toxic her mom is, even growing up and doing drugs in front of her kids, taking them to drug deals. It's disgusting. My girlfriend has told me that she is making sure she brings up her kids differently, which makes me so proud, honestly. By the way, her dad also lives in the house and he is an absolute legend. Never had a problem with him. He's always been so nice and relaxed with me. I have no idea how he puts up with his wife. Advice would be nice if anyone's offering. I'm just finding it hard at the moment, and my main priority is making sure my girlfriend is okay. Sorry for the long one. Thanks, everyone. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. You need to leave that house. You might not be able to afford to buy or rent a house, but surely you could afford to rent a room in a house share or apartment share. That wouldn't be much different from your current living arrangement. If you're able to qualify for a mortgage, you must be able to afford that. Comment two, thank you, it means a lot, even just to rant about it a bit. I'm trying to speak to my parent and see if we can move there. It's a rough area and we'd be sleeping in a single bed in a tiny room, so it's not ideal, but we just need to get away from the toxicity. Now, for the update. I'm back with an update. One week after the last post, Mia and I ended up spending the weekend at her dad's house. He actually offered us a place to sleep after things at home got really unbearable. We got there Friday evening, and he welcomed us with a big smile and some homemade pizza, which was so nice. Seriously, the atmosphere felt so relaxed compared to what we were going through at home. We shared stories about our week while eating. It was a moment we really needed. On Saturday, Mia got a text from her mom demanding to know why we left without saying goodbye. Mia responded, telling her that we needed space and that she felt overwhelmed. Then the mom sent a string of angry messages, accusing Mia of being ungrateful. I noticed Mia getting quieter as she read the messages. We decided to go for a walk to clear our heads and ended up at a nearby lake. While we were there, Mia expressed her frustration over her mom's behavior and the favoritism shown to her sister. It was like everything was just building up and then exploded. On Sunday, we went back to the house briefly to grab some clothes and check on our things. Her mom was waiting for us, arms crossed, and demanded to know why we were avoiding her. I calmly explained that we just needed a break from the negativity. But she dismissed my concerns, saying I was just trying to manipulate her daughter. Mia tried to stand up for herself, which only made her mom yell at her. I could feel the tension escalating, so I suggested we leave again. We went back to Mia's dad's house, where we spent the night playing board games and watching movies. It was a much needed distraction. The next day, Mia's dad pulled me aside and asked if I was okay. He encouraged us to find a place of our own, saying he would help us with the first month's rent. That offer meant a lot to us. During this time, Mia's mom kept sending angry texts, completely ignoring our need to distance ourselves. One evening, Mia got a call from her sister, who said their mom was in a bad mood and wanted to talk to her. Mia hesitated, but agreed, thinking it might help clear the air. But during the call, 
Her mom made hurtful comments about Mia's choices and her relationship with me. That really set Mia off, and she hung up, visibly upset. I tried to comfort her, but she said she just needed space. I respected that. Later that week, we visited a potential apartment that felt perfect for us. We submitted an application and felt hopeful about getting it. But the next day, Mia's mom showed up unannounced at her dad's house, demanding to speak with Mia. I couldn't believe she found out where we were. Mia confronted her mom, and they got into a heated argument right in front of me and her dad. Her mom accused Mia of abandoning her family and threatened to cut her off financially. It got really intense, so Mia's dad had to step in and tell her mom to leave us alone. A few days later, we got the news that our apartment application was approved. We celebrated, but in the back of our minds, we knew we had to face Mia's mom soon. On the day we moved into our new place, Mia's mom showed up with her sister, demanding to speak with her. The confrontation was intense, with Mia refusing to back down. I watched as Mia told her mom that she would not tolerate her behavior anymore. Her mom stormed off, threatening to tell everyone that Mia was making a mistake by leaving. It was a relief to finally have our own space, but we knew the road ahead would still be challenging. Edit. After my last post, Mia and I decided to cut contact with her mom for now. It's tough, especially since her sister has been trying to convince her to come back home. But Mia is determined to focus on her mental health and our new life together. We're slowly settling into our apartment, and it's been a positive change for both of us. We're also looking for jobs and exploring the area. We're hopeful for the future despite the challenges. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.